Welcome to a large model showman's engine. This is part 83, completing the stainless steel ornamental cylinder cover. Before commencing the episode, I would like to show you this. It was sent to me by my amazing friend Alexander Carnes in the USA. And it's all about a very large restored steam engine that he was involved with a few years ago. And now they have regular steaming days. Here's a schedule for 2023. Please note that Woburn Municipal Waterworks Museum is not in the United Kingdom, it's in the USA. And as I live in York in the United Kingdom, it's a bit impractical to make the journey. As I have quite a lot of viewers in the USA, I thought it would be a good idea to include this flyer at the beginning of this video. Now it's time to get back to work machining this cylinder cover. In this episode, I've remounted the internal jaws of the four-jaw self-centering chuck fitted to my Smart and Brown 1024 lathe. And I'm machining away the central register that I left on the part in order to mount it in my Boxford lathe to turn the outside diameter. As I mentioned in the previous episode, I've completely run out of carbide tips, so I'm having to use a tool with a permanent tip fitted, and luckily this is a good one and it's very sharp. Yesterday I ordered some more tips from RDG Tools, and they should be here today. Ironically though, I finished this job yesterday, so I don't need any carbide tip tools for a while. But you can never have too many of them. It is not good when you run out. This job is making a lot of swarf, but not quite as much swarf as in 1996 when I machined the smoke box for my 7.25 inch gauge Titch steam locomotive from a solid billet of mild steel. The amount of swarf from that job was monumental and it filled two bins. I know I've been showing a lot of swarf in this part of the series, but it is a part of machining that is very common and most people don't show it. You have to remember that however sophisticated the machinery may be, swarf management has to be included in the process. A friend of mine has an engineering company and around the back near the machines, in the yard, is always a skip absolutely full of swarf. The amount of swarf commercially produced makes my efforts look feeble. But the swarf is just as sharp and nasty on my machine as it is on a larger industrial scale. This part of the job is nerve-wracking. Quite a lot of time and effort has gone into getting the part this far. I have to be really careful how much metal I remove. Because if I remove too much, what's going to happen is a disc of stainless steel will fall out of the centre of the work. And that's why I drilled the hole early. It's the hole in the centre that lets me see how thick the piece of metal at the front of the work is. If everything goes according to plan, the thickness of the front part of this component will be around a quarter of an inch. I'd like to take this opportunity to mention that I'm using a four-jaw self-centering chuck, which means that the part is supported by four jaws and therefore is less resonant. Also, because the part's been supported internally, four jaws apply a little bit more pressure without distorting the shape. I could have quite easily turned this part around in my Boxford lathe and supported it internally with the Boxford's three-jaw self-centering chuck. But for this job, four jaws are definitely better than three. And you can hear by the sound of the machining, I'm not getting any chattering. This is the most nerve-wracking part because it can go wrong. If the final cut chatters, I won't get the finish that I need, so I'll need to take another cut, and if that's not good, another one, and then eventually the job becomes too thin resonates far too much and it's going to be a real problem. But with a nice sharp lathe tool, plenty of lubrication and the correct speed and feed, this is the finish I get straight from the tool. Am I happy with this? Well, yes, but I think I'll use some Scotch-Brite on it. But first, a health and safety warning. What you're about to see could be dangerous. When using Scotch-Brite or similar abrasive pads in the lathe, I do not recommend using this method. 
attach the abrasive pad to a piece of wood in order to keep your hands further away from the chuck. As you can see in this image, I am not using a piece of wood, I'm using my hand to hold the piece of Scotch-Brite, very bad practice. However, I have evolved a method over the years which makes it slightly safer. I would never apply a piece of Scotch-Brite or emery cloth or wet and dry sandpaper to a piece of metal this size in a lathe that is so big and powerful. If I rip all my fingers off, I will have a problem because I won't be able to pick them up off the floor if I could find them amongst all the swarf. What I'm actually doing is holding the Scotch-Brite in my right hand and applying it to the work and my left hand is gripping my wrist and putting some pressure away from the chuck on my right hand. If I was to relax my right hand, the pressure put on it by my left hand would pull it away from the chuck immediately. Okay, it's still not safe and I still don't recommend it, but this is the way I've done it for many years and old habits die hard. I was very pleased with the finish I got on this part. It's going to look really nice when it's fitted back on the engine. Even though I didn't show it, I chamfered the edge using a chamfer tool, and this is nice and smooth too. No sharp parts at all anywhere on this cover. Now the cover is finished, I'm removing it from the chuck, and I think it's time for a bit of deja vu. This clip is from part 78 when I first got the piece of stainless steel. This piece of stainless steel measures one and a half inches thick by six inches in diameter. And as you can see in this clip, I'm going to have to machine quite a lot of it away to fit over this original cylinder cover. Why did I buy such a big piece of stainless steel, you may be thinking? Well, this is a tutorial, and I'm going to show how to reduce the size of this. I also intend to try and make some fundamental errors when machining this. It's better to watch me doing it than to do it yourself. To finish, here is the original cylinder cover that I remachined and threaded a hole in the centre, which will end up holding a mounting to support the ornamental cover that's next to it. And this special fitting that I've yet to make will incorporate some method of allowing me to pump oil into the cylinder after running before parking up for the winter. This should prevent any sticking of the piston or into rust in the cylinder. That's it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.